This is the seventh video of eight that I'm sharing here on YouTube from my full course, Vue.js 3, Composition API with Pinia and Beat. In this video, we're going to be learning all about lists, the incredible new teleport component, and how to use template refs and next tick in the Composition API. You can find a link to the whole playlist down in the description, and you can grab the full course with my discount at dannys.link slash composition API. Lists using the v4 directive work exactly the same way in the composition API as they did before. But just to quickly demonstrate that, let's output this list of posts dynamically by using a data ref and a v4 directive. So let's jump to our posts page. So source, views, posts, view.view. And let's set up a ref where we can place an array of posts. So I'm going to add a new comment here, which just says posts. And we'll set up a constant called posts. We'll set that equal to a ref. And we need to import the ref method from view. I'll put this at the top here. Import ref from view. And we'll place an array inside this ref. And each item in the array will be an object with a couple of properties. So we'll add an ID property and set this first one to ID1. And we'll add a title property and set this to post1. And then I'll add a comma after this object, duplicate this twice, and just change the IDs to two and the title to post two for the second item. And then for the third item, I'll set the ID to ID three, set the title to post three and save that. And this posts array is now available in our template. So let's use it to spit out these LIs with our router links dynamically using the V4 directive. So I'm going to get rid of all of the LIs and the router links apart from the first one and save that. And let's add a V4 directive to this LI. So V4 post in posts. So this is going to loop through our posts array ref. And as it's looping through, each object will be available at the placeholder that we're specifying here, post. And we also need to add a key property. So colon key equals, and we want to set this to something that's going to be unique. So we'll set this to post.id and save that. And we can now see three posts being spit out. So let's output the post title here, which is going to be at post.title. And then let's update the link in the two prop as well. So I'll use a template string by adding some back ticks around this, get rid of ID one and spit this out dynamically by adding dollar curly braces. And we also need to add a colon to the start of this to prop and then inside the curly braces we'll output the id which is at post.id save that reload so if we click on post one we're on the id one page if we click on post two we're on the id two page so you can see there are absolutely no differences when it comes to lists and the v4 directive in the composition api Let's talk about template refs. Now, I don't mean the data refs that we've been using for some of our reactive data. I mean how back in the options API, we could add a ref attribute to an element, give it a name, and then we could access this element when the component is mounted and then do something to it, such as focus it or add a class or figure out the element's width or something like that. And I'll just remove this ref for now. So let's say we want to access this heading element, this H2, and we want to figure out the width of this element. We might need the width of this element for responsive design purposes or something like that. For example, we might need to change the size of the text or something if the element is too wide or not wide enough. So in the composition API, we still add a ref attribute to the element that we want to target. And you can use any name you like, but the accepted standard is to use camel case with the word ref at the end. So we might set this to app title ref and save that. So how can we access this element when this component is loaded? Let's scroll down to our app title here. Now in the options API, we could just do this dot dollar refs dot app title ref. And we could then access that element and then do something with it, figure out its width or whatever. 
However, in the composition API, we don't have access to this $.refs, so this is not gonna work. So what we need to do instead is set up a const with the same name as our ref, app title ref. So const app title ref equals, and then we need to set this to, a little bit confusingly, a data ref. So we set this to a ref method, and we set the initial value to null. And again, we're gonna to need to import this ref method from view. So let's add it to our import here, ref comma, and we can now access this element via this ref and via this constant when our component is mounted. So in this mounted hook, what we can do is app title ref dot value. We do still need to use dot value for template refs, and this should give us access to this h2 element so let's just log this out for now, console.log and save that. And we can see our heading being logged out in the console there. So if we wanted to get the width of that element, we could just add dot offset width to the end of this. And I'm just gonna cut that. And we'll log out a template string with the text, the app title is, and then dollar curly braces. And then I'll paste in that code again app title ref dot value dot offset width. And then after that, I'll just add pixels wide and save that, reload. And we can see here, it says the app title is 318 pixels wide. But if we resize our app and reload, it now says the app title is 453 pixels wide. next tick allows us to wait until the DOM has updated and then do something. So for example, if we click on a plus button here, our counter is updated and the DOM is updated. And next tick allows us to wait until that DOM update has completed before we do something else. So let's say when we increase our counter, we wanna wait until the DOM update has completed before doing something else. So I'm gonna jump down to our increase counter method, which is here. And in the options API, we could do this dot dollar next tick and then pass a callback into that like this and then do something after the DOM has updated. However, this won't work in the composition API. If I save that and change the counter, we'll see an error. In the composition API, we need to import the next tick method from view. So I'll scroll up to our import statement and just add next tick to the end and instead of this dot dollar next tick, we can just do next tick and then pass a callback into that. And then we can do something when the DOM has updated. So do something when counter has updated in the DOM, save that. And if we change the counter, we can see that being logged out. Or since next tick is an async function, we can also use async await to do this. And to do this, we do need to make our increase counter an async function like this by adding the async keyword here. And instead of this method with the callback, I'll just get rid of that. We can now just do await next tick like that. And if we save that and increase the counter, we can see that that's still working. View 3 brings us a new feature called Teleport. Now this isn't specifically a Composition API feature. We can actually use it with both the Composition API and the Options API in exactly the same way within any View 3 app. However, I wanted to cover it anyway since it's such an amazing feature. Teleporting allows us to move an element from its default place in the DOM to somewhere else in the DOM, usually outside of our View app, as in outside of this div with an ID of app, which is the root element of our view app, or teleport it to another div, which is a child of the body. And this is really handy for things like modals, which might not display correctly if we display them somewhere deeply nested within our app's DOM tree. Now this homepage is pretty complicated now, and so is the posts page. So let's create a new page where we can play around with teleporting. So I'm gonna create a new view in source and views called Models view dot view and we'll add our template tag and within that I'll add a div with a class of models and then I'll just add a h1 tag 
with the text modals and save that. And we need to set up a new route for this. So we want to go to source and router and index.js. And let's just duplicate this posts route. And then I'll change the path to slash modals, change the name to modals, and change the path to the component to modals view dot view and save that. And so that we can easily get to this page, let's add a link to our navigation, which is in source app.view. And let's add a new router link after this home link. So I'll duplicate that, set the path to slash modals, and set the text to modals as well. Save that. And let's see if we can get there. And yeah, we're now on this modals page. So let's jump to that modals view dot view. Uh, let's create a button, which when we click it will show a modal. So after this heading, I'll add a button with the text show modal, save that. And let's add some markup for a modal with some text and a button for closing it. So I'll add a div with a class of modal. And inside that I'll add a H1 heading with the text. This is a modal. And then I'll add a paragraph with some lorem ipsum. In VS Code, we can output some lorem ipsum by just typing in lorem and hitting enter on this Emmet abbreviation. And then we'll add a button underneath for hiding the modal. And I'll just put the text hide modal and save that. And let's add some styles to give this a background color and some padding. So we'll add a style tag, target the modal class, set the background to beige, and we'll set the padding to 10 pixels. And now let's set up a ref for determining whether or not this modal is shown. So we'll add our script setup tags. And I'll add a comment which just says modals. And we'll add a constant called show modal and set that equal to a ref with an initial value of false. So if this is false, then we won't show the modal. And if it's true, then we will show the modal. And we need to import ref from view. I'll add another comment here, which just says imports, and then we'll import ref from view. And then we'll add a V if directive to this div with a class of modal. I'll split the attributes on that with the split HTML attributes extension, which we installed earlier on. So V if show modal, save that, and we can see the modal disappear. And if we change this value to true, then we see it appear again. Let's set it back to false and let's change the value of this with our buttons. So on this show modal button, we'll add a click handler, which sets show modal to true and that's working. And then on this hide modal button, we'll add another click handler, which sets show modal to false. Save that, see if that's working and that's working. So we can now show and hide this modal. Now let's add some styles to this modal to make it absolutely positioned and full screen. So I'm gonna jump down to the style section, set the position to absolute, set the left to zero, the top to zero, set the width to 100% and the height to 100% and save that. And you can see this hasn't worked. And I'll just stretch this out a bit. And the reason it's not worked is because this modal element has an ancestor element, which has its position set to relative. If we go up in the DOM and choose our root element, this div with an ID of app, and look at the styles, we can see this has a position of relative. And this is exactly the reason why we often need to use the teleport component. And you'll see if we drag this div to be a direct child of the body, then the modal is full screen, although it doesn't look quite right because I think we need to add a Z index to make sure it sits on top of everything. So I'll just jump back to the style and add a Z index of one, save that, reload the page, show the modal, and then we'll drag this to the root of our page as a child of the body. You can see this now looks how we want it to. So we can now use the teleport component to teleport this Dave with a class of modal to further up the DOM tree, such as we've done here in the dev tools. So to do this, all we need to do, I'll just reload that, is surround the element that we want to teleport, which is this div in a teleport component. I'll just select the div and move it into the teleport. And then we add a 
2 attribute, which we set to a CSS selector to determine where we want to teleport this element to. So if we just want to make this a direct child of the body, then we can just set this to body. And I'll save that. And if we reload, and I've spelt that wrong there, that should be teleport. Save that again and reload. And you'll see if we show the modal now, it now looks how we want it to because the teleport component has teleported it to be a direct child of the body. Or if we don't want to teleport this to the body and we want to send it to a particular div, then we can do that as well. So let's just jump to our HTML page in the root of our project, index.html. And we'll add a div after this div with an ID of app, which is where our view app is living. And we'll add a div with a class of modals-container and save that. And now if we jump back to modals view .view, we can jump to this teleport component and just change the to prop to dot modals container and save that reload show the modal and it is moving the modal to the modals container div that we just added however it doesn't look right because all elements in this app are being given a position of relative because of this asterisk style here so we might just need to override this style for this modals container div and we could do this in our base CSS. So if we go to source assets and base CSS, we can just jump down to the bottom, target our modals container, modals dash container, set the position to initial, save that. And it now looks okay. If you want to grab the full course, my discount, jump to dannys.link slash composition API. And the link is in the description. Or there's one more video left to go in this YouTube series. Make sure you click subscribe and click the bell if you don't want to miss that. And you can find a link to the whole playlist down in the description.